Hello and welcome back to Leander98 channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to make a 3D printable car in Blender. We're going to be using a 2019 Toyota GR86 as our template to make throughout the tutorial. So, without further ado, I present to you the 2024 modeling tutorial for 3D printing. Alright, let's begin the next part. In the last one, we set everything up. We got textures and we even put the auto smooth on so let's begin I guess for this part we're gonna take a look at well getting the roof as well as yeah we're just gonna do the roof so let's start so we do have this line right here however uh, we're not gonna do the physical dip in there this millisecond we will after we get this line over here set up though so we're gonna extrude over and then just move the vertices into place now we want to be rather simplistic with how we place our vertices yet so we will probably look a little low poly, which any which anyway might be a little better for when it comes to loop cutting. All right, so we're gonna inch that up a hair. Let's see, move that up. That, mm, it's fine. Okay. All right. So now with that in mind. We're going to select these lines here. We're going to press V. Actually, you know what? Oh, come on. There had to be a... One second. Okay, that's better. We got what we wanted. All right, so with those lines placed, we're going to press the V key, and that is going to rip the vertices. We're then going to scale in the X direction. And we'll bring it down a little. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this whole line. Oh, I remember what I wanted to set up. All right, so I'm going to press some things, and you're not going to know what I did. All right, so I pressed 4 and Shift E. Okay, so pretty much what I did is I set up some, some uh, keyboard shortcuts. So on the Edge command... I had 4 be to mark sharp. And then, in the preferences, oh boy, this is good. Oh man, I don't remember where I f had this one. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't think I can remember exactly where I had that other one. It was probably somewhere in here. Let's see. 3D view. Oh, I bet you it was somewhere in here, but I'm not going to remember. So pretty much I had a little command set up to where if I press Shift E, it will come to mean crease and type in 0.99. Now, you can just come over here and type .99 if you want, but it saves a lot of time if you can just press a button command and it does that. So then what we're going to do is we're going to deactivate, deselect that, and why did it... Oh, did it? Hold on. Select all that. Come to Mesh. Merge. By Distance. Yeah, I thought so. Select all that again. There we go. Now we got our last line. So what we're going to do, we're going to deselect these two ends. And then we're going to come up to face. No, edge. And bridge edge loops. I'm going to be pressing 5 for that from now on. And then fill these in. Pressing F. And there we go. Now we will have to watch out because triangles are a little bit of a messy thing. But we're close enough to the end that I don't think we're really going to be adding much there. I am going to take a loop cut and place a loop cut closer to this edge 
then drag it on out. This will add a little bit of roundness to that. So, I'm going to do it again here. Closer. Drag it out. Nice. I guess I'll have to start playing with subdivision here because I guess a lot of people tend to use subdivision when they're in their modeling stage. Now the reason I don't do this is because I work on a laptop. It's not the strongest thing in the world. So I like to have that off when I'm modeling. But we'll have it on for now. Hmm. That's causing a little bit of a fuss, ain't it? Well, how about we go to weighted normals? We're going to add this modifier. Let's see. Where do you like being placed? It probably has something to do with that angle that's being placed right here. What if we make that 50? That didn't do a darn thing. Place that back to 30. Well, it definitely likes being up here better. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that... No, I didn't like that either. Huh. Interesting. What if we drag it over? Hmm. Now, why are you like so much? Huh, maybe because it's made itself one. That works. Okay. I guess it just wanted to be set to one instead of 0.99 because it didn't match the others. Now, to be honest, I prefer to use 0.99 as one can cause some issues when it comes to solidifying, but I think we'll be okay with the new thing that we'll be doing later on. We're going to take this line over here, and we're going to bring it over there, shrink it a little, maybe just a hair bigger, whoop, we want the Y direction. Okay, so we're going to then take this line and then come out to this line here. Now, I will note that there is a slight gap between that line and that line, so we will get to that bit here soon. We're even going to double G. That one better stay. And then we'll bring down to where we need that line to go. So right there is about good. It even helps when it comes to making sure that your mesh is okay by changing up the view a little, even if you're not looking at a line, and just dragging things in place so that it actually looks genuine. That's good. Okay. So this bit will come down this way. Then we'll double G. Drop that down. But as you can see, we need that to come over there. But we also need to place a line here. So we're going to drag that there. And then we're going to scoot this over. So that's close enough there. However, I don't like the fact that I now have so many heavy lines right there. It's a tiny spot for that. So, we're going to delete this vertice. We're going to select that, subdivide that, bring this up, make sure it's still in a good location there. Okay, so now we need to make a 4. So that's a 4, and that's a 4. You know, let's scoot this over this way. Sweet. 
Yeah, other than purposeful triangles like this, generally you want to try and keep fours. If you can stay away from n-gons, that's good. So we're going to take this and we're going to bump it up a little. And we'll even move it up a hair. Nice. Okay. So with that in mind there, we'll take this down. Probably going to unnecessarily switch between front and back way too much. Woo! We're forgetting something, aren't we? Now, you'll definitely have to make sure that you remember which one that you're grabbing here. Because this one was up above here, and you could have sworn that it was the inside. But, that's the inside right there. Now, this is where something gets tricky. Sometimes, we will have the watermarks cut in the way, and we might have to look over here. So, we're going to take this, put it in its approximate location, and let's see. Move that in. And that looks okay. It'll round out then. All right, so we're going to make sure that we are down, down, and then we're just going to swing this whole thing over, up, and up. Now, yeah, that is incredibly blocky. And yes, the subdivision does smooth that out, but not in the place that I want it. So that means we need to add more loop cuts. So we're going to play the game of twos and then drag that. We're going to be going over quite a distance, actually. This one, we'll double G this back into place. That's a lot better. And we even got that natural curve going on from doing that. Now let's see. One, two, three, four. We'll make this its own path. One, two. Okay, so we need two. Obviously, there's going to be more added. But for right now, let's make it even. So we'll bring that out. Double G this one in. Double G again. Swell. Okay. We're going to save that for window portion of the tutorial. Okay, so we have this spoiler here that we need to make. We're kind of leaving the trunk area, the roof area, so let's get back to the roof area. Now, sometimes you're going to have a situation to where, well, grabbing this and moving that over might not be the best idea. So let's actually, we're just going to grab a single vertice. Now we're going to press E and extrude that out. We're going to go to this line that we have over here. Supposedly, it goes there. We're going to then take this line, subdivide it, take that line, subdivide that. So now we're following this curve. So we're going to then put these lines back on the curve like that. It looks like we need another. that and that all right let's head back but we'll have similar vertice counts going this way and then it ends into the tail light sweet And then looks like we'll have that come down. Bring this over. We'll add one for the curve. Shift select. And there we go. Okay, let's bring these into place. All right, now let's try and make a mesh out of that. So that looks like a four. We're going to have to deal with a triangle at the moment. There's a four, 
There's a four. Ah, now we have a five. So we're gonna take this. Gonna make a triangle of four. Bows this out. And now we have fours. Now sometimes you'll get this. And that is common when it comes to extruding single vertices, as it will get ugly doing that. So, what we do in this case, select all your mesh, come to mesh, normals, recalculate outside. And then because it also did that, we have sharp edges. So, our sharp faces. So we're going to come to shading, smooth faces. And now we're nice and smooth. Sweet. Okay. However, we are going to do this again, and then reconnect ourselves with that. All right, so we're end up going to do extruding faces. Make that in line with that. It's probably going to get ugly for a brief second here. We're going to double add two there. Swing that into place. Probably means it needs to drop. Alright, and then we're gonna double G them into place. Shift select that. Let's see. Hmm, we're probably gonna end up having two come through here, so we'll take two. Put it into place. This one will select, will connect here. This one I want to go somewhere else. So we'll select that. Four and four. Make sure it's nice and straight. Now we see that we have that. We happen to have a triangle over here. So we'll convert that triangle into a four. Give it a little bump. Double G this into place. Select all mesh, mesh, smooth, recalculate. Nice. All right, so then we're going to take our outside edge, drop it down, scale it down, rotate it. We're even going to scale it up in the Z direction a little. All right, we look to be in a place there. How about here? Rotate. And bring that in. Do what we did earlier. Make sure that this looks all conical. Looks pretty good. All right, now we got to do twos. Bring that out, bring it up, make sure it looks good, and then I'll just connect the faces. And then make sure that the transition looks good. Bump that out a little, we'll take this and push it back in. There we go. Looking good so far. All right, we'll stop this part here. Well, next part, we're going to do this fender. Maybe even bleed into the rear bumper. So, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.